so there's obviously a new June out this week. And in the 80s, there was another June out. But in the 70s, there wasn't a June. Do you want to tell us why not? <laughs> um, famously, it was introduced in 19, 1975. Uh, before that, there was only 11 months in a year. Um, and it was only after the calendar started to fall out of whack that they went, wait a second, maybe we should make it 12 months. And so yeah. it was in, in the 70s that they added June into the calendar. Um, oh, that's and a very clever since... joke because of our British accents. Oh, that wouldn't British have worked accent. in America because they say Dune. <laughs> it's got a unit. It's Dune, you fools. It's Dune. <laughs> not Dune. Not Matt, 50% of our watches are American. Take I think that it's back. more than that, actually, yeah. Oh my god! I'm sorry. Um, no, don't be silly. Dune. Jodorowsky's Dune was a documentary filmed in 2013 by Frank Pavich. Um, it's it's pretty interesting. It uh, is good. So it is a good documentary. What, should I tell you what what it's about? Yep, I'd love that. Okay, it follows um, extremely eccentric, and that's putting it nicely. <laughs> director <laughs> Jodorowsky, um, following uh, a couple of like weird art house hits um with el, el topo holy mountain uh in 1974 he tried to adapt june into a feature film uh but because of one reason or another uh, he ended up creating this massive like a3 bible uh of of storyboards and plans uh that was just never released it was never made and so this documentary uh, documents the process, uh, the crewing, the yeah. storyboarding, and uh, the ultimate failure of Jodorowsky's June. Yeah, and it could have been one of the biggest films ever. It could have been one of the yes. biggest flops ever. But if it was made, it would have been... Well, they wanted $15 million to make it, which mm. back then is quite a lot of money. Um, it would have had some huge stars attached. If, if This is if it all was made exactly as planned. Yes, it would have been a landmark film in cinema, but it also would have completely changed cinema because completely they, changed it ends cinema. with saying how the fact this wasn't made um, led to other things being made, which then influenced other things. And, it, and, and the storyboards, this yeah. they try and claim at the end, which I kind of call bullshit on, like that the people saw the storyboards and then were inspired, and then they showed a bunch of like similar shots. And I was like, I don't think Raiders of the Lost Ark, the things. The, the thing coming out of the arc is is taking yeah, the I, I, like that. I, I thought Sci-fi, that was very tenuous 100% like oh yeah oh yeah of course Alien and Prometheus are going to be inspired by Jodorowsky's Dune it's which like, also had H.R. Geiger as one of the main yeah, artists on yeah of course he, it's he, he reused that concept of art. Like, yeah of course but yeah. and it's like Flash Gordon it's like yeah there was a, a big room with a bunch of aliens in it's like yeah but do you really think Jodorowsky came yeah. up with that <laughs> like yeah that was a bit of a stretch. Um, so, what is what what I found most interesting about Jodorowsky as as a director, as a person? Um, I know it's something that I enjoy, um, uh, and Matt, we've done it a couple of times now, and hope to do some more successful ones in the future. Um, I do think it's it's always important to sit down with a director in like uh, an informal setting, yeah, and just kind of pick their brain and understand what makes them tick and yeah and what you can take away from that because nine times out of ten if you get nothing else it's going to be inspiration you're going to walk away and feel like invigorated i did like, i'm yeah. i'm going to go and i'm going to start my next project yeah uh, like, he, he sounded so creative like just the way he was thinking was so completely he sounded like a genius and his ideas sound it's weird because if you saw his ideas written down or even if you just watched his film you'd be mm. like this is insane this is like maybe even bad but his <laughs> his enthusiasm and his backing yeah. up absolutely every one of his decisions with a reason was really infectious and so yeah it, it, he came across so so well um, so he started in uh in like the mexican film scene uh, in a time where uh, tell correct me if i'm wrong where you couldn't direct a film unless you were part of like a director's guild that's what he said yeah like and you, you legally couldn't make a film Unless yeah, you're, you're part, part of, this part of their union. And he said, like, you, how dare you do this to art? I'm just going to make it anyway. Yeah. Like, you and can't tell an artist not to do it. And and, right. uh, and his, his films are, like, famously very artistic. 
Yeah. Um, very creative, very I unique. I them up. They've got good reviews, but they're very, like, they're incredibly surrealist, and, which yeah. isn't necessarily a go-to genre for me, but looking at them, they, they looked very interesting. Mm. Uh, and it was it was after his successes with these films that um, he was a- approached by a producer and like he said, what what do you want to do? You can do anything. Yeah. Uh, and he said, June. Um, but a point that he makes very clear from the start is that it is Jodorowsky's June. Yeah. It's not Frank Herbert's June. And so yeah. that's a very big departure from Vil- um, Villeneuve's Junes, which yeah. are as as close to uh, a faithful adaptation to the the book as you can get jodorowsky's june it's just vague names and, yeah. and places <laughs> but i don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that i mean it might annoy some fans of the book but i think that's kind of fine for films like take the shining is mm. um oh completely yeah that's that's Kubrick wanted to make a horror film and so it was like okay let's see if there's any books where I can draw I can take the the skeleton of that and then build my horror film on that and Jojo Rabbit with Taika Waititi what's that is it Caging Skies the book it's based on it's very loosely based he wanted to make a film and took that as a skeleton and then made it a Taika Waititi film and so yeah. I get that he's taken the loose concept of Dune and he's like I'm gonna make I'm gonna use this it's the same when you have like ballets like you see a ballet of of mm. um a Christmas Carol or something. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Like, I completely agree. I I think I think that's completely fine. I'm I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, but I can see why others wouldn't wouldn't think, especially when there hasn't been a faithful June at that point. That's that's the hardest thing for me. Is it's different if you're adapting the book that Jojo Rabbit was based on because no one's right. Like what? Yeah. What is that? Like where are your your diehard fans? Whereas June to some people uh, is almost like the Bible. So it's it's like me picking up the Bible and going, this is good, right? But I'm going to make Joshua's the Bible. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's I'm like going to take Harry the Potter character of Jesus, Jesus and yeah. I'm going to I'm going to adapt his story to fit whatever I want to do. And it's uh, going to end it's... with him becoming a planet. Yeah, yeah. Like what? So what are some of the bizarre ideas that have that aren't anywhere in in relation well, to the book at all? Leto, his father, um, is castrated and conceives Paul with a drop of blood. That, that turns s- into sperm, of course, because it Yeah, has and to be you sperm. watch that whole thing. Yeah. The way he's describing <laughs> it. And it's like, what's that got to do with anything? Um, it open, the opening shot, which I actually think sounds quite interesting, to show the importance of spice, it goes through the whole universe in one long shot, and you see like pirates stealing it, and you see these vast empires are built rich off spies and that sounds quite interesting um it's one of the many things where it's like okay in the 70s this would never have worked no chance yeah there's like just like um visual things like baron harkonnen lives in a giant statue of himself and the mouth (laughs) opens up and the spaceships land on his tongue and stuff like that (laughs) june the book the way i read it the way i understand it that Frank Herbert was more interested in making a world than a story. Yeah. Like, I mean, he was I more get interested. That yeah. Like, how would Arrakis work as a real place? Like, how would people feasibly live out there, mm. like, with steel suits and natives and worms? How would this uh, intergalactic council, uh, uh, like, emperor and these <laughs> families work? And then it's, you, you kind of ex- extrapolate that, don't you? And you look at Villeneuve's Dune, you're like, okay, yeah. that all kind of makes sense because it's it's like quote unquote as as realistic as you could be with such a high concept. Yeah, N- like nowhere am I reading Dune, and am I seeing like pure flamboyant colours and huge Baron Harkonnen statues that he's living in? And I think Dune- Har- I think Baron Harkonnen's quite eccentric to a certain extent. He's weird. Oh, weird, completely. But, but I, he's taken it's just, seriously as well. It, it's yeah, it's like it's just the wrong tone. Like it's for me, it's like a tonal misunderstanding of, of yeah. the book. But that's part of like yeah, it, it's Jodorowsky's June. It's not. It's not his June. Oh, it's, completely. It is. It and you look at change. his. You look at his films, and they're just full of color. Yeah. So it's it's not surprising that June looks like a a, a texture's gone missing from a video game. 
Like yeah. that's how everything is designed. That's how the spaceship looks on poster. <laughs> um, I just thought when you mentioned still suits, like about when I I just died laughing watching Lynch's one. Oh, you know, in um, Villeneuve's Dune, when he's talking about the still suits, says like your sweat is reabsorbed as as water, which you can then drink. And then in Lynch's one, it goes, your urine and feces is collected. And it's just, <laughs> it was so funny. And it's like, yeah, I know that is like, it is canon in like the film stuff, but they just, you can't take a, a scene seriously when they're saying that. So a big uh, part of this film is Jodorowsky crewing up. Yeah. Um, hiring some huge uh, names. Big names. Starting with uh, Mobius. Who yeah. is a French comic book artist? Yeah, like the main two in the documentary, I, I'm not familiar with, but yeah, he's like the he's done all his drawings, all the yes. storyboards, right? So interestingly, the way he started it was he he almost described it as filming without a camera, yeah. where he would would sit down on a on a like quote unquote shoot day with Mobius, who is this yeah. French comic book artist, and would explain the frames that he would want, like what he would want to shoot. And Mobius would just sit down and crack out storyboards. Mm. So he storyboarded the entire film start to finish. Um, which, like, don't get me wrong, isn't an uncommon thing. But I feel like the way he went about it, usually you would see sequences being storyboarded. Like yeah. big action scenes, scenes that cost a lot of money that you need to convince someone with money to give you. But doing, like, a whole film start to finish... What an like an interesting. I think that thing. does happen though. I has that's never been repeat released publicly, has it? Because they mentioned. I like, had a look. I couldn't see it because they mentioned some. It was some celebrity or some like famous. Was it the director of Drive or something? Said that he is one of a few people uh, who, who has read the, in Ren. Yeah, he said he yeah. read the whole thing and he was like, "Trust me, if you've seen this film, this is crazy." They should release it as a book. They should, yeah. Especially I'd, like, or I'd I mean, we could do like an animated series of it or something, just mm. to do something with it. Yeah, there's a bunch of, of like people he, he has in has in it. I think there's a producer, um, the French. He's producer. also being interviewed. Yeah, there's like Dan O'Bannon, who's passed away, so he's not interviewed in the documentary, mm. but they include his voice. Uh, I was familiar with him. Um, he because he talked that he was hired because originally he wanted who was it? it was someone really famous, and they didn't give him any time of day. Uh, oh, it was um, Douglas uh, Trumbull. 2001. Douglas Trumbull. 2001, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's like the most famous of that shit. Um, and so they got, he asked, he watched Dark Star and got Dan O'Bannon and said, I've seen Dark Star. It's a student film. It's very cheap for sci fi. It's it's um, John Carpenter's student film. Dan O'Bannon, like, Is it? produced it with him and, like, wrote wow. it. In. Yeah. But it's like John Carpenter's directorial debut. Uh, but it's a student film. And so it's mm. it's high budget for a student film, but it's made with like, the sets are made with like you know crates and uh, and the <laughs> villains an inflatable beach ball with like some stuff stuck in it. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm very interested that he chose him, but I can kind of see why you would because on such a low budget, it is quite impressive what they managed. And Dan O'Bannon did go on to do some really great stuff. Mm. Yeah, and then who else? He um, H.R. Geiger. Who is it for music? That was someone really famous. Pink Floyd? Uh, yeah, he, he sat down for a meeting with Pink Floyd and explained that this film was going to change the world. And Pink Floyd said they would do an album <laughs> for But them. this is also because it's a little bit untrustworthy narrator. He yeah. seems to imply that Pink Floyd was like fully into the idea. Is that the case? We don't know. Mm, we'll never know. And it's like... Um, um, and like I, Mick Jagger coming up to him at a party and being like, I want to play... Uh, Elvis's part. Yeah. Uh, who else? And, Salvador um, Dali. Salvador <laughs> Dali, Emperor. yeah. Yeah. And um, Orson Welles as Baron Harkonnen. I, I after, into it if he gets paid more than any actor's ever been paid in history. <laughs> yeah. What would so, Orson Welles say if he was uh, Baron Harkonnen? I can't even remember the quote. It was like, I like this French or something. What was it? Ooh. The French. <laughs> <That's> it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's as like a pipe dream film, If with all the money in the world, I think it could have been yeah. really cool, and it would have been the biggest thing ever. But it's almost strange to talk about how it could have ever been made, how they thought it could. Because it ends with them being like, oh, it's a Hollywood thing, we're all European, um, and it's all too surrealist, they wouldn't have gone for it. 
And it's like, I'm surprised they kind of thought they would in the first place. Yeah, it's it's not like a studio came up to him and said, what do you want to make? It was just a producer came up to him and said, what do you want to make? Yeah. And the fact that he managed to get so many people on board with like no funding. Yeah. Was weird. But to be fair, listening to him talk throughout the movie, he has got the gift of the gap. He is so fascinating to talk to yeah. and he's so like passionate that he sounds clever because he wholeheartedly believes in what he's saying whether or not there's any like objective um merit to it is another matter but <laughs> he, he i can he is like persuasive i get that and i get why yeah if you went for a meeting with him you could be like wow this guy knows what he's talking about would it have been good i i don't think it would have been good i think it would have been a, a beautiful it couldn't have been good because of the 70s if it was good if it was made later even then i just i, mean, I just think it's he's too still alive. weird could he do it today no he, no. Would, he would have a heart attack trying yeah. to make it and it's like i think he says it... at the end when lynch's gets made instead and he's like oh, i'm God, really yeah. jealous but david lynch is very similar like surrealist filmmaker and it's like he was like okay great so they're still going with this sort of vision he didn't want to watch it, then his his sons forced him to. And then he said... His son who he cast as Paul. Yeah, that... Uh, right. That... <laughs> no studio would have agreed to that, and I don't know how he ever thought they would. I'm surprised, like, Orson Welles and that wasn't like, come on. What? Yeah. Maybe he was, but he wouldn't have mentioned it, would he? He was too busy thinking about the French, wouldn't he? Yeah. That was quite a funny scene when he's watching it in the cinema and he's feeling really bad, and then it starts, and he's like, and I was overjoyed because it was shit. <laughs> 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 that's good and he was yeah just saying how um he knows that it was that wasn't on lynch that was the producers yeah um, completely reining it back and trying to make uh a, just a conventional hollywood film out of it and um he was is kind of some happiness in the end that his vision was never tainted because it never got to the point of being made and so the storyboards still exist in the exact format he wanted the film to be and he's even taken ideas and and turned it into a comic, like, yeah. or comics. Mm. Uh, like good for him. Like if that's what you want to do, good for you. Yeah. So it was well, an interesting Jodorowsky. documentary. I'm normally like not big into just talking head stuff, but this is literally just John Ross and people just yeah. telling you the story of it. Such and, an interesting story, and it is just well worth a story. watch. Yeah, I think so. If you're interested, if you're interested in filmmaking and behind the scenes or or June. Um, I'll watch it like it's it's great i don't know is that are we done with this review of yeah what did you rate it uh, i think it was four stars it was it was good yeah i gave it four and a half oh, that's very enough. much enjoyed it 